students feel like they have expertise, they're proud of themselves, they can talk about this much more readily. And what we saw is that they began to advocate for themselves in a positive way. What this came from was them being able to talk to adults in a way that made them feel like they were valued. Hello, my name's Deneen Kensington. I'm the Deputy Head Teacher of Ferndown Upper School. I'm an Educational Researcher and I'm a Fellow of the Charter College of Teaching. We're here to talk to you today about the Being a Boy Project and the work we are doing supporting boys' education at Ferndown Upper School, which is an upper school in Dorset. And my name is Ollie McVeigh. I'm an Assistant Head Teacher. I oversee the boys' provision here at Ferndown Upper School. I'm also the Head of English. Um, and I've worked alongside Deneen um, with a lot of the English development and uh, support of our boys over the last few years. We're going to talk to you today about our projects that we have linked up with the University of Ulster about taking boys seriously at Ferndown Upper School. Um, this has come um, from looking at research in many different ways across the boys' educational sector and coming up with a programme that is appropriate for boys at this moment at this time in the field of education. Um, as you can see from the presentation, um, you will see that there are 10 principles about taking boys seriously in terms of their relational learning. And we started to work in deeper partnerships along with the University of Ulster and Arts University of Bournemouth to really address some of the serious issues that are facing boys and their education today. Um, and we are going to take you over the next 10 minutes um, through how that has manifested itself, but most importantly, um, how that has had a positive impact on our boys. So our journey started in 2020 when we decided to kind of implement more of a research-based um, approach for boys' education. And from the, uh, the research that was implemented, there were four key main areas that kind of came up from this that we have worked with and established and implemented programmes around, um, one of those being the teacher's attitude. Um, and we really do believe that the teacher attitude is the fundamental part of the support that we can provide with boys within the education system. Um, and the idea of the teacher's understanding through uh, pedagogy, but also through experiences and relationships with the boys um, helps us to really implement routines within not only our practice, but as a whole school collectively to ensure that the boys um, are getting the best possible education they can. Um, from the research, it was clear that the students' perception was that there was an imbalance between genders and that girls were um, treated in a very different way to the boys. Um, and that creates a barrier for their learning in terms of their own perception of themselves within the classroom and the way that they feel that their teachers see them. Um, and at Fernand, we've talked a bit about how um, teachers can understand those students' perceptions um, and how they can maybe look at the routines that they have to try and address and support that. Um, at Ferndown, we've really established that low aspirations in our students is a myth. Um, and actually, the aspirations that are perceived to be lower are the teachers themselves and the way in which they view the boys' aspirations. Um, and we've really looked at trying to address um, some of the ways in which low aspiration is associated with boys um, and also the way in which teachers play a role within that. Um, and we also wanted to speak to our teachers about avoiding comfort based approaches when they're dealing with our boys um, and talking about having that harder kind of conversation that's more structured um, and supportive without feeling like they needed to um, soften their approach to comfort the boys because that doesn't work and support them in the way in which can uh, alleviate some of the concerns that they have. What our research told us was that when a teacher or an adult says to a boy, don't worry, everything's going to be OK, what the boy hears is you don't believe that I can do it. So that comfort, the avoiding the comfort based approach that Ollie has talked about has been vital to improving impact. Having teachers actually meet the student at the problem and say, this isn't good enough, but this is how we can help you fix it. I'm an expert. I can help you through it. And we know through research that that is the way that boys need to be treated as being part of their own educational journey. The Being a Boys project came to us through uh, my educational research um, and it's a project that we're very passionate about that is being run by Dr Alex Blower at the Arts University of Bournemouth. And what this meant was our boys were um, sent to um, the Arts University of Bournemouth and they got to access different kinds of education, um, art-based education, education that individualised their personal needs. We know this is an expensive thing. We wanted to try it to see if it would have an impact and it did. 
we saw that when boys were part of their own educational process, when they were allowed to choose and develop their personality through their education, there were anecdotal improvements in behaviour. We saw students being able to access extracurricular opportunities above and beyond being a boy. They were open because they were accepted, because they'd had the opportunity to explore certain areas of their personality. We were then able to have really decent targeted conversations with these students about what they needed in order to improve. The students feel like they have expertise, they're proud of themselves, they can talk about this much much more readily and what we saw is that they began to advocate for themselves in a positive way. What this came from was them being able to talk to adults in a way that made them feel like they were valued and we had some real experts, Dr Ashley being one of them, there having a look at how they wish to represent themselves in creative writing and we'll talk a bit about that later. What we saw by and large was a decrease in apathy from the boys. And we are really proud to say that for the first time in the school's history, we are seeing educational equality. There's 0.1 in it. Ollie and I are more than convinced that we will even that up, if not improve that um, next year. We are seeing that with this um, laser focus on the boys, giving them what they need and what they require in order to improve, to show them that we respect and fully listen to their voice, that educational quality is completely possible. The Being a Boy project has really helped us. There's an increase in the way in which they are attending school, but also their access and their willingness to access programmes that we're putting in place has come as a direct consequence of the Being a Boy project. Um, we've seen boys who have um, really flourished within writing poetry and expressing themselves in more of a literary sense that has then encouraged them to speak to individuals who are talking to them further about literature um, and exploring different more creative avenues um, and that's com as a consequence of the investment that they've had but also with the staff working with them there's been an increase in the relationships that they've had um, and as we've mentioned earlier the relationships that our staff have with the boys make such a difference both inside but now also with this program outside of the classroom as well, um, which is really helping to give them a full experience, but also helping them to navigate so many of the issues that our boys have, um, especially at this age. Really, it's about this culture. Um, we're really keen on culture and the culture speaks to all of the subjects that we have. Um, I can speak from the perspective of English, um, being the head of English, we built our culture of staff and students working together to get the results that we've got and we have seen the best ever results that we've had for English as a consequence doubling our progress eight in a year. Um, our boys were right up there with the girls performing and that comes down to the idea that we have that trust, we have that investment, we have that time invested into the students and we train our staff in a way that benefits all students having targeted groups to support boys as well as girls. And we've seen that that performance has really flourished as a consequence of that. Um, and there is this investment in all forms of what we're doing as a consequence of this, because they trust the culture, because they understand the culture. When we bring people in to do mentoring with them, there is that trust already established. The boys are willing to get involved in it and engage with these people that they've not met. Um, we have guest speakers, we have mentors, all of them have commented on the way in which our boys engage with them and that is a direct consequence of the culture that we establish as a school but also as individual subjects um, and it's this idea of this open-minded approach the idea that conversations take place at key points throughout the journeys educationally for our boys that ensure that they are supported but they understand that that support is coming from a place that is directing them aspirationally for the future um, and it's really working to, to understand those moments but also to implement the support in a trusting culture that means that they get the most out of that. So when we were going through um, being, being a boy we were, had the opportunity to talk to students as they were going along and we saw the impact directly on their self-esteem. Um, one of our students here talking about that um, when I asked him how he got on with his photography he says I know how to do this miss an expert taught me that self-belief came from an adult showing interest and showing that self-belief that belief in the student themselves 
this had a positive impact on that student. This is what we need to mirror through all of our educational interactions with boys. Um, further to that, you can see on the screen that um, I spoke to another student who had been involved with writing something about him, about his life story, because it was important we added value to it. I went around and got, got the students to sign their, um, to sign the anthology that had been printed to sign the pictures. They appreciated the investment. This is what we're talking about when Ollie talks about culture. This is what we're talking about. And he was so proud of himself. It's my story, Miss. They printed it. And he happily signed it because he owned it. And that is the benefit of being a boy. It's about recognizing them for being a boy and for their masculinity um, and having those really important male role models there to show that they can access the art, that they can access creativity creative subjects, as well as a plethora of others. And we have seen that that's had a direct impact on the boys' self-worth. And it's all about this assimilation of the taking boys seriously principles. Um, we have spent time with our staff using CPD as a means to educate them on these principles. And obviously the programme that we're going to talk about um, the implementation of has been based and rooted in these principles. And that's fundamentally because we believe that they work. They talk about how boys need to navigate masculine identities. Having those male role models is really establishing that sense of what it means to be a boy. Um, and the Being a Boy project has been an amazing um, kind of association with that process. Um, and we have built in that mentoring approach. We've got the male role models that we've trained and we're supporting and they are navigating our boys. They're meeting with our boys as we speak, talking to them, and they're responding so brilliantly to the fact that they have got these male role models that are understanding what they're going through and also helping them to navigate it. It's it's amazing to have that support that can actually take them through that process um, and not just kind of watch from a distance. And that's been really fundamental. Obviously, this is not the end of our journey. In fact, far from it. This is this is the start. Um, we have used the Taking Boys Seriously principles to look at the pedagogical lens that we are using within school. Um, as head of teaching and learning, I have sat with the teaching and learning team. We've gone through the principles to see where the gaps are for our boys. What we're seeing is a reduction of apathy. We saw increased engagement. We hope to continue with that. Um, it hasn't just stopped there, though. That's one aspect of the school, the Taking Boys Seriously principles. We have laid across our behaviour management strategy and we are seeking a reduction of sanctions for boys this academic year. Last academic year, we saw it with the boys that we um, had impacted. We had a small pilot group. We did see a reduction of behaviour sanctions. We saw a reduction um, of exclusions. We hope bringing that across the entire school this year, that that will be reflected in the same way. We're also very focused on boys' literacy. The Taking Boys Seriously principles lend itself really well to that. Something that's unique to our school, um, Ollie just spoke about the mentoring program, that's unique to our school. Also what's unique to our school is the literacy program that is addressing the challenge faced by boys in accessing literacy. We know there is an absolutely horrendous vocabulary deficit by the time boys arrive at school and the Taking Boys Seriously principles, plus with the work that um, Ollie and the team have been doing in English is addressing that. We have just launched a pilot scheme in the last week where we have got um, an outside speaker coming in who um, is a TikTok judge um, for literacy and is working hard with our students and we are already excited um, about the impact that that has had on our boys. And that introduction of that uh, TikTok influencer has really helped us to start to broaden what we're offering. Um, so we are increasing the amount of partners that we've established um, and that experience has really made a massive impact in our boys. There are so many boys following that um, meeting have taken up reading. They've started engaging with reading, talking about reading, um, reading books alongside us and talking about those books. And that's only been a matter of days. So we're really excited for what a matter of months is going to do for these boys in literacy, but also in other areas as well. Um, we're really keen to start and we will be starting a rowing academy. We want our boys to be able to have discipline. We want them to be able to develop leadership skills. And we are having a leadership program that's going to follow that as well, teaching our boys how to lead positively for not only themselves, but for others, because we know that they can. And having that high standard and commitment to the rowing academy is going to really help them to enhance that um, kind of skill that we want our boys to really have and show them that it's possible to, ex to excel and succeed. Um, many of these boys don't feel like they can succeed, and we really want to show them that they absolutely can. Um, we have got um, a lot of events that are taking place over the next few months associated with men's mental health, um, awareness and understanding of 
uh, navigating that and talking about it, I think it's important as part of being a boy is to talk about the mental aspects of being a boy as well and the struggles that we face. And that goes through the male mentoring program, but also we're going to have uh, external speakers that are coming in and speaking to our boys about that as well. Um, we have got a coaching program that is alongside the mentoring. It's really focused on helping those attitudes to learning to ensure that the students are supported going into their lessons to understand and coach them on how to deal with situations that maybe they once maybe wouldn't have approached in the right way but understanding the rhetoric around that and their discourse around that um, and their perception of themselves but also everybody else's perception of themselves um, and part of that masculine identity so there's loads of events that are coming up there's loads of things that we're really excited about as the coaching program there's kind of extracurricular opportunities that are going to go alongside that with the coaches and the boys to, again, further establish that relationship, that culture that we talked about, because it is so important to us. So that's Ferndown um, and what we're doing and how we envisage the next 12 months to go. We are on a three year trajectory to improve and layer on intervention after intervention and to make sure the boys understand that we want them here. We care about them. We're fully um, supportive of them developing themselves as um, male members of society and we'll be excited to feed back to you on how that has gone. Um, it isn't just in Ferndown however that we are focusing um, our impact. We are, we are the foundation school of a boys impact hub. It's a regional hub where we specifically focus on boys that are in receipt of free school meals. Um, we take our strategies to that group in order to share it wider afield. We have specific aims in order to make sure that we can provide a really good evidence base um, in order for other schools to share the good practice that we know is going on here because we've had the results. Um, part of the conference that um, we were all in attendance at is about moving those impact hubs further afield. Um, we met with um, the national group yesterday um, in order to talk about how we can push that forward because we need to champion the experience of our young men we need to make sure that we're able to provide those key role models to them that their staff in their schools understand what they need in order to be the best version of themselves and when i say their staff i mean their staff we are here to serve our students and that should be equally for girls as well as boys and so we're looking forward to hopefully um, getting ahead of the national conversation to show what effective practice looks like we're willing to work with other schools to pilot new approaches we are currently as we speak now researching into what we're learning so that we're able to share that practice too we need to develop our understanding more of the challenges facing our young men and to help them understand that we are here and we are willing to help